Tags in Obsidian are something I've never really gotten into. Links, yes. Links are semantic and easy to create. And metadata, absolutely. I can put most of those in a template, and then when I create a new note, all I have to do is fill in those values. Those aren't a big deal, and I use those all the time. The thought of having to tag notes with like some sort of topic or keyword and then doing that for every single note or even just most notes is daunting and really just exhausting and I've never been able to understand why people use them, honestly. In this video, I'm going to show you an app that is entirely separate from Obsidian that has kind of broken through this tag barrier for me to the point where I think it might actually be useful. And it does so in a very interesting way. This app uses AI to automatically assign tags so that I don't have to do it. This app is called Napkin. Napkin is an app that does three things. It collects thoughts that you send to it. It uses AI, specifically a fork of GPT-3, to automatically tag each thought. And then it helps you create stuff by resurfacing similar notes that maybe you haven't seen before using these tags. I've been using Napkin for seven months, and that's really more than enough time to have made a video about it. But I wanted to wait until I was sure not just how to use it, but that it was going to be incorporated into my workflows. And I am at that point. I have ponied up for the $300 Believer plan for Napkin, which is going to grant me lifetime access to Napkin. So I've put my money where my mouth is. And that's why I felt comfortable accepting an affiliate link from them. So if you are interested in Napkin, then check out that link. But let me show you how it works. There are four ways to get thoughts into Napkin. The first way is to click this button here when you're in Napkin to add something manually. Once you've typed out your thought, you can hit enter. And then as you can see, Napkin has already tried to identify some appropriate tags. So I didn't have to type evolution, emergence, adaptive behavior. Those are actually pretty good. I'm also going to add something like bottom up and I'm going to relate it to the Zettelkasten. That's just because I know that I'm going to apply it in that context. I'll say note taking as well and load testing because I've created content on emergence in those fields as well. So I've just added tags in addition to the magical tags that Napkin provides. So that's how to add a thought manually. You can also use the web clipper. There is a Chrome browser extension and there is a Napkin app, but it's iOS only. I honestly don't use those two options all that much because I usually use the fourth option, which is through Readwise. Readwise is an app that I've talked about a lot because I'm such a fangirl of it. Yes, I do have an affiliate link. It's readwise.io slash Nicole, but I've been using it for, I don't know, years now. And I basically use it as middleware for getting all the bits of content that I consume from the internet into my Obsidian vault in some way. And now they have an integration with Napkin so that Napkin pulls in my Readwise highlights. So I don't actually add thoughts very often directly into Napkin. More often than not, I'm just adding them into Readwise and Napkin is pulling those highlights in. So in Napkin, you would just have to go and click on this import Readwise highlights button. I've already gone and set my account up so that they're syncing. It's bringing in a certain amount of highlights every day. So it's not going to be all at once for performance reasons. And very soon you're going to have a lot of thoughts here. Isn't this a very cool UI? Like all your thoughts are here, kind of like little bits of napkin that you can, you know, that you can spread around on a table. So it's kind of a cool way to just explore some of the highlights that you've thought were interesting. So that's how you get thoughts into napkin. The second part is tagging and reviewing. When I open napkin, I usually do the daily mix here. That's this button with a little play icon. And when you click on it, it has a set of these thoughts that it prompts you to review. I click start and it prioritizes things that I sent several months ago. So this was actually six months ago. And it looks like there is a tag here already that napkin identified. That's the magic symbol. And this looks like something that I manually added. This is the author's name. 
So this definitely looks like it's something related to emergence. So I just hit T, that's the keyboard shortcut to add tags. And I'm just going to add some of these. I'm also going to put decentralization and maybe thinking and aggregation. So I'm just adding some keywords here and then I'm going to hit escape and then click the right arrow. So now I'm going on to the next thought. Looks like this is still from the same one. So definitely emergence as well. And I'll say biology and evolution. And then I'm going to go through these. And this is something that I've actually never seen. And yet Napkin has filled out these tags already. So this is self-organization. I'm actually going to remove this tag and I'm going to call it self-organization because I think those are very different things. So now I've gotten to the end of the daily mix and this is not really something that I want to keep. I probably highlighted this because I was looking at the Playwright API, it's not really relevant right now and I don't think that it's going to be. So instead of trying to tag it, I'm just going to hit Shift A and that's archived that idea. And of course I can undo that. Now what that's doing is it's already removing that thought from this jumble of thoughts that I've got in Napkin. So it's not going to show up in searches. And that was it. I can click that check so that it says now that I've finished my daily mix and I've got 261 more ideas in my inbox. Now I can just continue to review these and I actually think this is really fun. I don't know. I was just saying in the intro, right, that I don't like to tag things, but I don't know. There's something about already having some of these tags here that make it not so bad. I also just get lost in these highlights for some reason more than I do in my my notes is that there's just something about the UI that's so charming and it, it's very like addictive. It's, it's kind of cool to see it in this format. So I also like just start clicking on tags and then now it shows me something else that has the cognitive tag and oh, maybe I'll look at thought leadership instead. Here's another one. An interesting thing is it is also surfacing these notes on the left and on the right that aren't to do with thought leadership actually, but they're related to the note that's here. So in this case, they have the tag relationship in common. So that's kind of cool that it's showing you what you searched for and then also what you didn't search for that maybe is related. What I'm finding is that the more manual tags I make and the more highlights I send to it, the better this gets with the magic tags and also with this identification of what thoughts are similar. So I can just go right to keep exploring on the thought leadership front and the things on the left and the right are also changing. So now it's looking at intelligence. This is really forcing me to examine one thought in comparison to other thoughts, which I really love. And the third thing that Napkin helps you do is to create stuff. So this is my workflow for it. I have a talk that's coming up next month. It's called The Lost Art of Taking Notes, but it's in the context of software testing. I'm going to be speaking at Eurostar in Antwerp, Belgium, and I haven't done anything about it yet. So I really need to prepare for that. So I really like using Napkin as kind of the very beginning of ideation for a talk like this. I have the main topic, right? But I don't really know yet what I'm going to put in that talk. So I would start by going to Napkin, hitting F, and then maybe, you know, it has this in the title, Lost Art of Taking Notes. So I'm going to hit Notes. And there's like evergreen notes, notepad, note taking. I can also just go through the ideas here, but I'm actually going to go and click on this play button to show notes with that tag. And then I can close that. And now it's showing me only those thoughts that are tagged with note taking. So this is about the Zettelkasten and hmm, this is interesting. I didn't think to search for PKM just now. Huh. And thought leadership comes up there as well. Okay, so let's say now that I think that this is a cool thought. What I can do is go over here to the very right. Napkin has this idea of stacks. Imagine a stack of napkins like piled on top of each other. It's kind of a way to take these thoughts and put them all to a side in one pile. So I'll click on stacks here and I already had one for monitor and Kubernetes. So I'm going to create a new stack and I'm going to call this one 
lost art of taking good notes. That's the name of my talk. So I can add sections here, but let's say I don't really know what I'm going to put in here yet. Maybe I'll put this one here and I'm just clicking and dragging and dropping directly into it. And let's see what else is there, but I'm also going to pin this one so that I can keep going on this pane. And I have it a little bit smaller than I normally would so that I can show it to you. This is one that I would have on my big screen. So then maybe I'm interested in something about work methodology. Let's see what I've got there. Okay, this one is about time boxing. All right, so work methodology isn't really cutting it for me. So um, I'm going to go and look at evergreen notes this time. So I could have also pinned that one. So let's say I want this one now. So maybe I'll start with what a personal knowledge management system is. So let me add a section here. So there would have to be something like the problem. I always like to start with a why, right? have that there. Okay, so the other section is PKM. Now I'm going to move this one down here and that one here. And what do I have about the problem? I'll open up the search again. I'm doing that with a keyboard shortcut. That's F. Maybe something about work or maybe tech. I like this one. Technical people are just people who try to understand. Okay, I'm going to drag and drop this into the problem because I think this is why I take notes because I need to try to understand different technologies all the time, but there is a limit as to how much you can keep in your mind. So now we kind of have two sections here. So let's just say that this is a fully fleshed out thing where I have different sections and I really put in a few notes, even though I've just got three here. What I would do then is I would copy the stack content to the clipboard, and this is where I switch to Obsidian. So now this is my Obsidian Vault, and this is a very empty one, really. It has some metadata, but I don't have anything in here yet. So that's all copied. Now I'm going to go over here and I'll hit Command V. And what that did is it pulled in the name of the stack. So that's a lost art of taking good notes, but I actually don't really need that. And then it has the sections that I'd identified, the problem and PKM, and then the content of the thought that I dragged onto that section. It also cites the source and some tags, as well as where I can go to open it up in Readwise, because this was something that was synced from Readwise. So you can see that this is how you could really start to piece something together. And I actually did this for my emergence talk as well. And I'm starting to do it, as you could see in the other one, for my um, monitoring Kubernetes talk. So what I would do then is after this is done, I will probably want to archive it. So then I would just go and click archive stack and it's going to be here if I ever want to undo that and see it again. It's kind of nice to just have the one thing that I'm working on, you know. We can close this. One of the things that I wasn't sure about when reviewing Napkin is that I didn't know if I really wanted another app and have data that was just stuck in that app. And I really love that with Napkin, there is a way to export all of these connections and all of these tags. So you can click on this person icon here. You can see that I have 1,291 ideas and 853 tags. These are the different ways that you can collect your thoughts. I already said that I'm a believer and you can export them in JSON and CSV. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So this is what the JSON looks like. If you want to be able to parse this, I think it would be pretty easy. And you already have things like the, the source, like the author, as well as the tag. So this is what it looks like as a CSV. It basically has ID, the thought, the source URLs, which is sometimes like here, you have something from Medium. Other times they just do like the readwise location and then they have the tags as well. So you're not actually going to be beholden to napkin. The data itself is going to be something that you can take out. So even if you assign tags manually, that's not locked into napkin, which is great. One of the limitations of napkin is that it doesn't have an Obsidian integration for now. I am talking to TFT Hacker, who is kind of exploring what an integration between these two tools might look like. 
I know there's something there, but I think that there needs to be a lot of thought put into how that would actually work. So Napkin does have an API, but this is a one-way push into Napkin. So it's basically a way to get your thoughts into it. So you could write something that takes your notes from Obsidian into here, but I'm also a little dubious about that because I would have to make sure, I'd have to look into the code myself to make sure it's not, you know, going into private folders and bringing those thoughts into Napkin. I do think it would be really cool though to have some of these thoughts and these tags applied back to Obsidian because then I don't have to worry about doing the tags myself. I find Napkin a much more pleasant UI to work with for tags. And if I can get that in Obsidian, that would be pretty cool. I also really like that Napkin just works on a browser. I'm using Arc, which is why it looks like this right now, but it'll work with pretty much any browser on the desktop or on the iOS mobile app. But anyway, if you'd like to see some sort of integration or you have ideas about how an integration with Obsidian might look like, maybe send a message to at TFT Hacker on Twitter or at TFT Hacker at PKM.social on Mastodon. Napkin is still in its early stages, but I'm already pretty impressed that it's managed to take something that I don't like, labeling things, and make it actually fun. There's something about the interface that makes it a joy to play with. It really does feel more like a game than a chore or work, which is saying something because you're tagging. But I also think that it's actually useful. See, I already have this workflow where I have Readwise highlights and then I bring those into Obsidian and then I create notes from those highlights in Obsidian. The reality is that I have way more unprocessed Readwise highlights than processed ones. And Napkin just looks at all of the highlights. So it works on that initial layer. So I actually find myself increasing my standards for what I'm going to create a note on in Obsidian because I know that Napkin is going to get those highlights anyway. Those highlights that maybe I don't have the energy to process right now or maybe aren't directly relevant right now, but when they resurface in Napkin, I think it's pretty awesome. There have been a few instances where something came up and I just thought it was so fitting for the situation and I wouldn't have thought to search for that in Obsidian. So I really love Napkin as an initial ideation exploration layer before I even go into Obsidian. If you'd like to try Napkin out, then click on this link. You will get 30 days of a free trial. And after that, it's either $10 a month or $8 if you're paying yearly, or you could pay the 300 and be a believer like me. Thank you for watching. Naylep Shahwala.